and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. And I'm Erin Johns. And uh, Anne will be back next week, but it's great to have you. Nice to be back and in the studio for the first time. Yes, welcome. Uh, so in the news this week, uh, while Trump won the Iowa caucuses, half of Republicans there rejected him, and a large percentage of them say they'll vote for Biden if Trump is the nominee. Meanwhile, President Biden has actually nominated two more out LGBTQ federal judges, and he's standing with a trans inmate in Georgia. Uh, Republican presidential hopefuls continue to try to outdo each other in transphobia, and I would add racism. And the Sup Supreme Court has sidestepped the challenge to a school allowing students access to bathrooms based on their gender identity. Alabama's law against gender-affirming care was allowed to go into effect by an appeals court, and West Virginia is seeking to ban such care for trans young adults now. And a school board in Montana has voted to allow two students to leave their class because their teacher is a lesbian. Wow. Uh, that book banner, Bill O'Reilly, got two of his killing books banned in Florida, and now he's pissed off. And Taiwan has elected a pro-LGBTQ leader. And we also talk about some top politicians elsewhere in Europe. And the, the Greek government has moved closer to same-sex marriage. Very sadly, a 21-year-old lesbian in Brazil has been brutally murdered. Awful story. Uh, uh, we are going to review Prayer for the French Republic on Broadway by gay playwright Joshua Harmon. Funnily enough, we both saw that. Um, <laughs> we were there together, we didn't, <laughs> didn't even know even it. Know. Um, and we're also going to give you the uh, LGBTQ lowdown on the Critics' Choice Awards and the Emmys. There were a lot of gay highlights this year. There sure were. Um, but we start uh, with, the, with, the, with the Iowa caucuses, if you're not too sick of hearing about them. Uh, Trump did win an historically large victory at the, uh, in Iowa. Um, but uh, from his dedicated base, uh, it was even, and it was even though it was awful weather. Now the silver lining, I would say, hmm. is that 31 percent say they will not vote for him if he is. These are the people who in Iowa, Republicans, they won't vote for him if he's criminally convicted. I don't hmm. know if it's going to happen in time, uh, but that doesn't mean, of course, that they're going to vote for Biden. And 65 percent said the conviction doesn't matter, which is. <laughs> So it's depressing how many people vote for, you know, um, authoritarian mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when uh, <laughs> there's the little dictator, uh, and there is the cover of The New Yorker this week. Um, but, uh, you know, democracy doesn't work for a lot of people. We, we, we have a democracy. Do we get what we want? Mm. Do we get, you know, the kinds of things that most people want? We don't get it out of our government. So people just say, screw it. I mean, you, you want to defend democracy, but we're not getting it. We want this. I think what was concerning for me, and I think what, what is making a lot of people uh, very worried right now, is that he, still he, he is not, people are not over Trump. The Republicans are not letting him go. The religious right seem to be embracing him more steadfastly than before. Um, he's the preferred candidate, and he knows it. So the results of this caucus are going to embolden him, I think. Uh, I mean, uh, he, left, he left DeSantis and Haley for dead. They were at 21 and 19 percent. And this was six weeks after DeSantis bragged that without doubt he was going to win Iowa. He was sure of it. Yes, but, but again, a, a total of 49 percent voted for someone else. Mm. And the interesting statistic is that um, 11, uh, almost half uh, did, did not caucus for Trump. 11 percent of caucus goers said they'll vote for Biden if Trump is the nominee. Yeah. They'll vote for Biden. We'll not see. that they're not going to vote or something. And of Nikki Haley's 20 percent that she got, 43 percent said if Trump is the nominee, <laughs> They're going to vote for Biden. Now that means they really don't want. They really don't want Trump. And a lot of a lot of commentators are saying at this point, uh, a lot of people didn't think Trump could come back, and you know mm. be, I mean, we we worry about it. Um, but when he 
when they realize that that's who they're going to get back if they don't vote for Biden, people, I, we hope people will come to some kind of a rational conclusion. I don't know. I don't know. I'm definitely worried. I mean, he won 98 out of 99 counties. And, you know, DeSantis, Sour Grapes, said, yeah, well, the media is to blame. They called it too quick. They called it 31 oh, well, minutes he, into a, it. And, and He's a whiner. People don't like yeah. whiners. Yeah, well. And Nikki Haley, you know, she got in trouble over the remark that, you know, she didn't, you know, she didn't mention slavery causing the right, Civil right. War. Well, this week, this week, she said... Uh, we're not a racist country. We have never been a racist oh, country. Boy. I wow. mean, read your constitution. Uh, slaves were enslaved people were defined as three fifths of a human being. Come on. I think the way she keeps hedging her bets about certain things is not doing her any favors no. in the debates. I don't know what Nikki Haley. Well, now she says is. she's not debating unless Trump debates. Well, I don't know her brand. But I don't she's know. She's not what her debating DeSantis is. anymore. Right. Well. Uh, this could get very uninteresting very fast. Yeah. Uh, so. But, you know, uh, Trump is looking hard at the reactionary, sycophantic Congress member Elise Stefanik, you, hmm. know, you know, from upstate New York, mm -hmm. as his running mate, because she echoed, she went on TV, and she echoed his line that the January 6th uh, people who are arrested and in prison are hostages, which is so offensive, especially in light of what's going on in the Middle East and everything, because that's the current word, word people are hearing about what, what happened to... Elise Stefanik. But what does she look like? If she doesn't look like a Fox newscaster, he's not going to be interested, surely. Well, well, they also say he's looking at Christy Nome up there in South Dakota. <laughs> so, because of all this... Yes! Uh, our friends at, uh, uh, at the activist groups are running StopTheCoup2025.org. Stop the Go there. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a rally in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. on January 27th, 1 yeah. p.m. at the Heritage Foundation. That is at 214 Massachusetts Avenue. It's about uh, more than Trump. It's about a blueprint to achieve a dis you know, mantling of democracy from the Heritage It's connected Foundation. to that, that viral thing we saw, that 2025 yes. uh, report that is all the step-by-step -step planning that can take us into a fascist state. Um, so, look, if you go, there's free buses from New York City to D.C. You're going to be joining activists, advocates and the organisers from across the country as they are trying to flush out who are the architects of this, of this plan. Right. Um, well, you know, I wish we were as organised with our plan when we get power. I mean, we are somewhat, and uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, by the way, I mean, I just read that uh, the Democrats are going to finally focus on getting state legislatures back. I mean, we lost them mm. in uh, 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 Obama's midterm elections mm -hmm. in 2010, a total disaster, not 2010, 2012, after the 2010 census, because we don't focus on those things right. enough. We're too national. Right. Uh, you've got to focus on that. So they're spending uh, Sixty million dollars wow. trying to win back Arizona and New Hampshire mm -hmm. and and the Pennsylvania Senate and hold on to very thin margins in Michigan, Minnesota, and Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That's all very important. I mean, because you know, state legislatures, especially now that the, you know these legislatures, they want they're going to be very interested in stealing the election for for real if, for real. if they can <laughs> and perhaps this even for real. and perhaps even legally under our crazy constitution mm -hmm. so watch out all right Let's talk about Biden. Well, Biden, Biden's doing some terrific things. He's, he's still, Sleepy Joe is still making some really <laughs> major moves. Um, he has two more LGBTQ uh, judicial nominations up his sleeve. Um, th this means he'll be on track to appointing a record number, 11, I think, in total. So who's who's up next? It's Judge Melissa DuBose for the District Court of Rhode Island. We have a picture of her. Yes, and is. if she is confirmed, she's going to be the first LGBTQ judge and the first person of colour to serve in that state, in that court. And also awaiting confirmation is Nicole Burner. Well, um, let's finish on Melissa. Oh, she yes. worked as a prosecutor for that state attorney general's office. And prior to her legal career, she spent 10 years as a high school history and social studies teacher. That's very that's encouraging. That's terrific. She'll so know, she knows what's at stake in the culture wars, doesn't she? Uh, that's fabulous. And she's now an associate judge of the Rhode Island District Court.
Uh, yeah. Right. And, Next. And, well, Nicole Byrne is going to be for the, fir the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. And um, I don't know much about Byrne. What's her background? Well, she'd be the first LGBTQ judge there. Mm. She's the general counsel to the Service Employees International Union, and she's been a staff, which is also a union mm -hmm. one, and she has been a staff attorney for Planned Parenthood of America in D.C. Uh, she clerked for several federal judges, and she resides in Maryland. Hmm. Yeah, so those are... Well, they're solid choices, aren't they? So, yes, that in his first term, 11, 11 LGBTQ judges. And judges. Obama only did... I don't, I'm not trying to knock Obama. No. We loved him in many ways. Uh, but he only did 11, of course, uh, LGBTQ judges in the course of two, two terms. Two terms, yes. But times have changed, and they Joe Biden have. is on to that. I like how... You know, people knock Joe Biden, but, boy, he, I like how responsive he is. I really do. He's getting stuff done. Well, that's what you want. I mean, you want a president who will listen. Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't always have these instincts, mm -hmm. but he listens, and that's very important. You want to be able to move them. Uh, I can't imagine moving. Yeah, and the clock is ticking, and he yeah. knows it. He's also doing a great thing here in Georgia, the state of Georgia. Uh, Joe Biden's, uh, I think it's the Department of Justice, is getting behind the plea of a transgender a prisoner going by the name ID'd only as Jane Doe. They are a 55-year-old woman. They've identified as a woman and been living as a woman since 1988. Um, and uh, this this uh, lady is now uh, basically alleging decades of violent abuse by male inmates and guards in the prison system. Denied surgery, denied, hor denied hormone treatment. Yes, and, and denied access to items in the women's commissary, yeah. which of course are, are some of the, the, you know, bare comforts you can get in prison. Uh, but anyway, She's saying that her Eighth Amendment uh, constitutional protect protections have been violated. Against cruel and unusual punishment. Punishment, which, you, which it would be if you're being denied uh, living in the gender that you've identified uh, as for decades. Uh, and also, a violation of the Americans with yes, Disabilities Act and the Federal Rehabilitation, Rehabilitation Act. Act, which is, is incredibly important. The Georgia chapter of the ACLU has also filed a brief in the case. Uh, so... We hope some movement. And I going can imagine happen. the Republicans will use this against uh, Biden, but because it, it comes at a time when Republicans are really trying to outdo each other in attacking trans rights and humanity. DeSantis's super PAC ran an ad attacking. Now get this, tricky Nikki Haley. That's what they're calling her for supporting the radical trans agenda, which. She does not, she by a mile. She doesn't. <laughs> but look, our Jane Doe has had two suicide attempts and in July 2022 attempted self-castration. So this is actually a pretty serious case. And we're going to talk about, you know, later on the, the Emmy Awards and things and how much people talked about the need for a lot more understanding in the world for trans people because yeah. of the way they're being piled on. Now. Absolutely. All right. Should we go to Florida? Yes, always. All right. So... It's the epicenter of book banning, yes. especially in Escambia, there on the panhandle, right? Uh, and they've now banned, we told you how they've banned dictionaries mm. and encyclopedias. This is going to be nothing on mm -hmm. the shelves. But hey, kids, <laughs> it is all on the internet. You go to dictionary.com and you can look up the meaning of any word and a lot of other things. Okay. I always say that because these book bannings are so stupid. But anyway, disgraced former Fox news anchor Bill O'Reilly, we have a picture of him, uh, his, two of his books have been banned, Killing Jesus and Killing Reagan. These are bestsellers. O'Reilly made a killing on those books, but he is really pissed off and this, about the censorship of his books, though he contributed attributed to the mostly anti-LGBTQ, anti-black atmosphere that led to book banning. Uh, De DeSantis keeps lying and says, it's all about banning pornography pornography and his crusade to free students from sexualization. I mean, yes. <laughs> come on. But as we've reported, they're now ban banning all these other things. Mm. A judge in Florida has allowed a lawsuit by Pan America, the anti, uh, the, 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 the writers group, which fights censorship and Random House to move forward against that ban. Oh, all of O'Reilly's books have the word killing in the title. I just, I, I know we live in the Republic of Gilead these days, but what does he expect? I mean, you create these climates, they're going to turn on you as well. Yes. It was, yes. Uh, Tennessee. 
Oh wanna... yes. Now this is another this is another fabulous thing about Republicans doing the wrong thing. A Tennessee school board member who is backed by Mums for Liberty has resigned after being arrested for stealing hundreds of dollars of goods from Target. Kerry Blair, 43, has been charged with theft of property under $1,000 and booked into jail. Um, goodness so, me. Unlike uh, that swinger, Bridget Ziegler, the founder of Moms for Liberty uh, down in Florida, uh, uh, she has, who has not resigned, uh, uh, she's, uh, but, you know, there are people uh, calling on her to resign. Her husband has been removed as the chair of the, mm -hmm. this is the people who were involved in the threesome with another woman mm -hmm. and all this stuff, the hypocrites. Speaking of Mums for Liberty, they do apparently have an event, their first event ever, a kind of town hall meeting, held here in New York, allegedly tomorrow, which is sort of surprising and out outraging well, well, many well, of while our While we're activists. taping, it's yeah. January 18th at 5.30. Right, on the Upper East Side at a place called the Bohemian Benevolent and Literary Association on East 73rd Street, allegedly. 3.20, not allegedly, it's happening. It's happening? Oh, yes, I talked to They've the organizers. They've confirmed the location? Oh, I talked oh, to the organizers, goodness. 3.21. East 73rd Street, if you if you can hear my voice. Uh, <laughs> there have been calls for the Czech government, which operates the hall, they own the hall, to cancel the booking. And when the government found out about the booking, they said, we feel terrible about yeah. it, but we got it. we're going to change all the rules about bookings, uh, but we can't break a contract. So there no. will be a protest there. Mm, this is a group, by the way, that is considered to be a far-right extremist organization by the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center. Well, Moms for Liberty is outrageous, but they're, but they're losing their mojo with mm. all these scandals, scandals and things. Yes. People are resigning, people are changing, people who were with them are calling themselves something else now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was always a grass tops organization. Mm -hmm. And again, why do these groups exist? They're funded by these, by mm -hmm. these Heritage Foundation, all these big right wing groups. To stir up. Who, uh, who stir it trouble. all up so that yeah. they can get power. Absolutely. And they don't care who they step on in order to hold power. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, outrageous. That's right. All right. Uh, what about what's happening in Idaho at the... At the university. So uh, a group of LGBTQ students are suing the College of Law, ba uh, basically alleging discrimination and uh, that there were racist uh, terms used in class and that they were attacked at a party. Now, one of the things that is kind of outrageous about this case is it's the third... Uh, legal action against the university in just a couple of years. And they're saying the administration did not properly investigate this. Uh, much of the uh, is much of it is coming from the Christian Legal Society, the the abuse, mm. who themselves sued for the right to speak out against gay relationships and the right to discriminate based on sexual orientation and gender identity. We want the right to discriminate against you. Well, the College of Law, I mean, you'd think they'd know their business. But look, in September 2023, the university actually settled a discrimination lawsuit with a former professor for $750,000. So right. watch out. Right. In Indiana, uh, the GOP, the Republicans, are targeting LGBTQ people with a slew. Uh, you know, this is going to be happening from now until these legislatures are out of session. They were so, we thought they had exhausted themselves last year, but they've come up with new things because it's an election year and they want to really keep things going. So basically, uh, one of the new bills, it voids any legal recognition of transgender people entirely. The state would recognize gender based on sex organs. Uh, so, I mean, it could legally uh, I, uh, I'd, uh, go after women who have had hysterectomies because they've lost a sex organ. Right. I mean, that, that, and you, then you're no longer, what, a woman? I mean, seriously, they don't write these things very well. It strikes out gender in every law, and it replaces it with biological sex. Mm. And another bill says that marriage is between one man and one woman. I don't know who the one man and one woman in the country who's going to be able to get married in Indiana are, but uh, any other marriage is void in Indiana, even if even if the marriage is lawful in the place where it is solemnized. It's this is it's they can't they're piling on the hate. And you know when they do this, it's you know it's more than just you know standing up principles. Mm. It, it, this creates a violent climate against us everywhere. Yeah. It's a sad, and so I have so many gay friends in Indiana, so that makes me very sad. Um, in Ohio, mm. uh, even the Republican governor, Mike DeWine, thinks that the 
two transgender candidates who got knocked off the ballot because they have a law there that says if you change your name in the last five years, we reported on this, then you have to list that as well so people, you, yeah. you're not trying to sneak in. But the protest is over the selective enforcement of the law. And of course, one of the selective enforcements is, well, actually, there's an exemption. If you change your name because you get married, you don't have to list it. Well, so, I mean, come on, that's not fair. I mean, we need to know who you were. Yes, and in Alabama, uh, the anti-trans laws are going into effect now. Um, they can begin to immediately enforce the ban against uh, any puberty blockers or hormone, tr hormone treatment to treat transgender people under the age of 19. Yeah, the law was on hold uh, after it was passed in 2022 because we had a good federal judge mm. who, who said, you know, put a hold on it. But this was the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. It also makes doctors who provide the care subject to 10 years in prison and the loss of a medical license. It's just the kind of law that's going to keep a lot of good doctors in Alabama where you have a lack of health care as it is, for God's sakes. But 22 states have similar laws. I mean, it's such a, a much ado about nothing, given that I think the Williams Institute estimates that less than 1% of Alabamians aged 13 to 17 are transgender. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just evil politics is what it is. And in West Virginia, uh, the, the Republican legislators have filed a bill that not only bans gender-affirming care for young, uh, for, for minors, but for young trans adults up to 21, but requ requires licensed mental health professionals to practice conversion therapy on trans people. This is really getting And this medieval. is Senate Bill 197, right? They already banned gender-affirming care for minors. The new, new, the new bill compares being transgender to pedophilia mm -hmm. as another example of sexual deviation. Right. Wow. Right, it's obscene matter, that's its classification, obscene matter, and so you have to be uh, no more than 2,500 feet uh, of a school. And um, basically any transvestite and or transgender exposure performances or display to any minor, so that, na that, that now means walking down the street past a school. Oh. Yes, That's right. nuts. But it's interesting, now, Look, I don't think and, and most people, uh, you know, have a, uh, you know a good understanding of transgender people and things, and we have a lot of education to do. But it's come out in the open because of these attacks, and so people have a misunderstanding. Uh, but it's also getting the issue discussed, mm. and as a result, di I'm going to say it's as a result. Diagnoses of gender dysphoria skyrocketed from 2018 to 2022, mostly in. Red, Red states, states. Indiana, <laughs> which we just talked about, Utah, South Carolina, and um, uh, Alaska, uh, the purple state of Virginia as mm. well. The Republicans str stirred all this up, and I think this is one of the results. And if you want to read more about this, it's from a report called the Definitive Healthcare Report. Uh, we had an increase in Virginia of 274% and 183% in Alaska of more people experiencing the, gender dysphoria. Well, the more, look, when I was growing up, and I'm 70 years old, all right, I mean, there was very, I mean, there were some books in the library that had gay themes. Of course, of course, <laughs> most of them were like psychology books saying we were sick. Uh, but, I mean, I, I would go to the library anyway, but I found gay novels, I found gay magazines at my local store. I mean, finding information was hard in those days. You know, we didn't have the internet and all that stuff. Uh, but, and people have trouble coming to an understanding of themselves when they don't have information. Mm. I mean, that's why, you know, we used to be able to be in denial about who we are, mm. uh, people of my generation, to some extent be in denial. Well, uh, I couldn't be that and all that stuff. But I think now, with all the information that's out there, it's very hard to be in denial about who you are. And now, especially with transgender, there is so much more information out there now. Yeah. I feel sad for those people in those states that aren't going to get the support they need. Well, we support you here at Gay USA, and we thank you for supporting us as well. Are we talking about Montana now? Speaking of education, um, a Montana school board has voted to let parents remove children from oh, a, a, a classroom taught by a lesbian teacher. I know two kids are, are going to be removed from the elementary school teacher's class because uh, she mentioned that she had 
a wife. Uh, this was all happening in Frenchtown Intermediate School in yeah. Frenchtown, Montana. What happened was she had a picture of yes. herself with a woman. Yes. And the kid said, oh, who's, who's that? that? <laughs> and she said, it's my wife. I mean, this is a crime. This is in a getting to know you activity, and I feel for her because I was a teacher for I was a teacher of uh, younger college age students, and they are curious about your personal life, and you kind of how'd you handle it? Well, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't, and if it's like if you if you try to keep yourself neutral and your identity neutral um, uh, because you want to privilege their identities, they they become more intrigued about who you are and who you're with, and then they're googling you all the time. If you try to come forth and say this is my life, I have a partner or I have a wife or I have a husband you, you you're in trouble as well well look I mean I mean I don't know exactly how it is in the schools right now because I was more active in the schools uh, years ago but a lot of LGBTQ teachers are very nervous about being out to their they'll be out to their yeah. colleagues I, right yeah but they're I was very nervous. nervous about being out to their students because it sort of gives them something you know, you tell them you're gay, and then you got a kid in the back of the room going, you know, saying slurs. Or saying their that's breath. why she doesn't like me. That's or why she gave a bad grade, or, which happened to me. Or whatever. So I understand it's hard uh, for 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 teacher uh, teaching profession. I think mm. it's changing. I mean, I do know people even in the, you know, 80s and 90s who were out to their students. They're, but often elementary school students, because those kids are very accepting. I mean. They get to the sixth grade, it gets to be a problem. No, I'm, I'm no, really I think kidding. it's the parents or not. I think the kid goes home and tells the parents, and the parents get upset on the kid's behalf. So Yeah, well, that's what happened in Montana. Mm. And so the school board voted, said, no, if they want to yeah. remove these, if they, you want to remove your kids from having a lesbian teacher, it was like a three to two vote. Mm. Yes, you can do that. So, but the great thing is, there are parents who are calling for the resignation of the board chair and have filed a discrimination complaint with the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights and started an online petition to protect the right of students and teachers to be out. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm. So that's, that's the encouraging thing. Yes. There are people in Montana, in all of these, Indiana, yes. all these places, who are uh, standing up for, for them. But he, even in New York City here, story I read in the Gay City News this week, we have a, something called the, uh, what do they call it? The Panel for Education Policy. The mayor appoints an education policy board. I got somewhat knocked off the board once because I read, when, when I, I got the press release about, who, you know, her, I looked her up and she had all this anti-gay stuff. So I just called, wow. you know, Eric Adams' office and said, you know, well, actually, it was brought to his attention by Alan Roscoff, the activist, and they got they got rid of her and she was very upset. Hmm. But now they there are two members now who are making all these transphobic remarks, mm -hmm. uh, saying that there's no such thing as trans kids, yes. that social justice movements are destroying this country, and so now they want to get rid of. Um, uh, there is calls to get rid of them. I mean, the Department of Education says their remarks are despicable, but they ought to be gotten rid of. Mm. Off the board, you can have a life, but you can't make policy for the schools with totally. attitudes like Absolutely. this. Absolutely. God. All right. Crime. Yeah, shocking news out of New Orleans. Oh, uh, this, yeah. is, this is a terrible story. I felt so badly for these uh, young men. Uh, so, yeah, I, I was only in New Orleans recently, and I did feel there's a vibe there. They haven't quite come back from the pandemic, but it, it did make Who me... Who has? <laughs> the city was uh, still a little bit rough around the edges. But look, uh, a, a couple, a business owner couple, they owned a bakery, a, a bagel shop in Tacoma, Washington, called Howdy Bagels. Um, got a picture of them. Lovely couple, Jacob Carter and his husband, Husband Daniel Blagovich. Um, that's Jacob there on the left. Yes, they were. Sh they were um, he was, yeah. basically just having a, a vacation in New Orleans. They were very excited to be in such a vibrant city and such a historically, you know, in many ways, very gay-friendly city. Our friend Brian Bat lives there and owns a, owns a beautiful uh, ha homeware store there. But they were, he, uh, well, Jacob was shot by a gunman at about 1.30 in the morning. His husband said that he died in his arms. And uh, New Orleans police have not arrested or gotten a witness ID of the assailant. I thought and there was a. Yeah, there I thought is there now? was a 16-year-old who was identified. Oh, he has been. You're, you're, you're so. up on. You're up but on. But they don't a. identify him I because see. he's 16 years old. No arrests have been made, though. Or have they? Have they taken him into custody? Have. I think All they right, have. All right. Very and, good. And well, anyway, uh, a they their bagel shop was known as a proudly queer company, according yeah. to the News Tribune, uh, a, and a safe haven for people in Tacoma. Uh, the motive. 
for the crime what is unknown. What is the motive? Well, I mean, could it be robbery or we, we don't, don't know? We don't know. It was, at one, it was at 1 o'clock in the morning in the French Quarter, which is not so late or anything. No, or, or not for New what's, Orleans. What's the problem? Not for New Orleans, but they have uh, the... Now, look, the bagel uh, store has started a GoFundMe campaign. They do want to raise about $50,000 to cover staff wages. The store is actually closed at the moment while, of course, uh, Daniel Blagovich deals with this terrible grief, uh, no doubt, he's going to be going through. Um, It's so sad because Jacob previously worked as a photographer in the Middle East, and you would think (laughs) if you're a news journalist serving in the Middle East, this this, this is not the place to die, is on vacation in the States with your husband. Very anywhere. sad. Very sad. Yeah, we had a, we had a beloved, you know, uh, crossing guard in New oh, York was who was shot on the subway. He was trying to break up a fight. Terrible of a Somebody music. in our neighborhood. Terrible. Uh, anyway, all right. In Alrighty. Harlem, however, mm-hmm. uh, a suspect who brutally assaulted a man on a subway, shouting homophobic slurs, is at, um, uh, is at large. But police have released a photo oh, of him, and there it is. It took place on 125th Street platform. 25-year-old man was uh, taking selfies on the platform, and the perpetrator demanded that he delete them, called the man a faggot, and then punched him multiple times in the face around 8 p.m. So if you have any info on this guy, uh, please call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-577-TIPS or log onto the Crime Stoppers website. So amazed. Don't people realize there's cameras everywhere? Well, uh, maybe not enough, but I mean, uh, that, at least they got a picture of this guy. Yes. We hope someone will turn him in. Oh, the, uh, over to Connecticut now? This Mar- is well, a, Mar- uh, oh, Maryland now? Well, Maryland, the, uh, uh, a man who threatened in a voicemail to the Human Rights <gasps> Campaign. Oh, yes, that guy. All right. He threatened to slaughter LGBTQ people. He's been sentenced to two years in prison. 34-year-old Adam Natina of West Friendship, Maryland... <laughs> <laughs> made the calls. This was after mm-hmm. a trans man was the perpetrator who shot and killed six at the Covenant School yeah, in, in Nashville, Tennessee, yeah. in March. So he, his messages said things like, you want a war? Uh, we'll effing slaughter you back. Cut your throats. You get the idea. We're going to kill you ten times more in full. And then he threatened elected officials mm. as well. Uh, you know, you you don't hear us threatening, you know, all heterosexuals uh, because the majority of the crimes, of course, are committed by heterosexuals in a heterosexual dominant society. We don't talk that way. No. But this is the way that some of these people think. What did they give him? What's the sentence? Uh, he, well, two years. Two years, that's Two right. years in prison for threatening. All right. Uh, in Colorado, the shooter who killed five and endangered 40 at the LGBTQ club in Colorado yeah. Springs pled guilty uh, to new federal charges. He's already in life, serving life in prison for the state charges. I was so confused about this because he pled guilty to the state charges. Yes, which and, he, and he got life in prison. Yes. So then he, they brought new hate crimes charges and, and violations of firearms laws, which would could also carry the death penalty. I see. So this so is he, why he's pleading not He's guilty. pleading. No, he's pleading guilty. He is to pleading this, guilty. To, to this. Uh, uh, That's right. He was not guilty for the state offences, and he's pleading guilty. Right. So he's trying to do it to avoid a death penalty. Yes. This is what you're saying. That's okay. what he's up to. All right. Uh, this they, was back. Right, excuse me. They. They. They are non-binary. Back. Back. back this was back November 2022. Okay. Um, in Texas, a woman has been arrested for murdering her 18-year-old oh, that was sad. girlfriend, uh, sad. Shania Turner, 24, believed to have been in a relationship with Tanya Horn, who was reputed, uh, reported missing on January 4th. Her body was discovered in a bayou in Houston. It was ruled a homicide. She was strangled. Uh, Turner. Compression been, to the neck. She's only 18 years old, right? Charged with murder. Very sad. Very sad. All right, now Connecticut. Oh, yeah, Connecticut. This was a fascinating. I always think of Connecticut as such a, you know, bedroom community to New York City and so liberal. But in in this town of Enfield, which is a majority Republican town, pride flags have been banned from hanging in government spaces and buildings. This is Enfield, Connecticut. This was a 6-5 vote. You Six know. five of councillors, but the, this is intriguing to me as their the raison d'etre behind this ruling. So the only flags that may be hung from public buildings are the U.S. 
and the state flags and certain military flags. Certain military flags? What if it's from a military gay group? Well, no. <laughs> um, An interim town attorney, Tom Tyler, said the measure was not uh, born of anti-LGBTQ bias, but it was to protect other groups from demanding that they have their flags flown as well. But, he mentioned ISIS and the IRA. But the town <laughs> attorney also accused supporters of the pride flags of trying to indoctrinate students with transgender ideology. There you go. Because, kids, if you see an LGBTQ flag, it's going to turn you gay or uh, transsexual. I oh, mean... insane. Yeah, it's. Uh, he was worried about their little town becoming the gateway now, to ISIS. I well, mean, now two fantastic. of the Republicans who were on the board had voted in favor of pride flags when they when in 2022, but you know the Republican machine has acceler uh, hate machine has accelerated since Enfield Pride isn't now. So Enfield Pride, they have an Enfield Pride group, oh, they little, do. little town. They are encouraging businesses and citizens to fly pride flags. So you're probably going to see more pride flags in town That's right. than you ever saw before, at least in June. I think I'm going to move there and put a pride flag in my, on my uh, Be careful. rocking chair porch. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we're, well, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk more when we get to the prayer for the French Republic. We'll right. review that at the end of the show. All right. Let's. We should. Yeah. yeah we'll get a on. wriggle on. Um, sports, yes. Um, Carl Anthony Towns, who is a three-time NBA All-Star, uh, personally welcomed the LGBT community to uh, the Timberwolves, Minnesota Timberwolves Pride Night, and he also we took, have a picture the, of him. took the mic and even gave a special personal welcome to Twin Cities Pride Executive Director Andy Otto and his family yeah, as, as special are. guests. So th it's a big deal. A big um, deal. And he made them his personal guests. And you know, when these big stars so. side with us, it's very and important. And he posted on his personal Instagram account too, which is, you know, his very heart's important. really in it. So that was lovely. Thank and, you very uh, much. And congratulations to the, uh, not that he needs uh, any from us, but uh, the open AI CEO, Sam Altman, you've heard of him, he's been in the news, uh, which Sam, uh, open AI f powers Chat, Chat GBT, GPT, which, yes. uh, which uh, I Marin use. is introducing me to. <laughs> he married his partner, software engineer Oliver Mulherin from Australia. They did it in Hawaii. Good last... choice, Sam. Good choice. What uh, a catch. Now they were asked by NBC about the photos of the of the event uh, uh, to make sure that they weren't AI fakes, <laughs> and they said no. Uh, uh, Altman confirmed that they were not. Time Magazine named Altman CEO of the year in 2023, and Mulherin Hale as a, you know is one of one of your people. Ah uh, yes, and he says Sam says married my best friend and love of my life. Well, I wish the happy couple all the success okay. in the world. Moving along, mm -hmm. international news. Yes. Ty Taiwan. Um, now, Lei Ching has uh, been obviously elected. Uh, we're very happy about this because he is so uh, LGBTQ supportive in the Asian region. And of course, Taiwan is the leader, I believe, of rights in the region. One, one of them. One they of have same-sex oh, marriage they and he do. said we're going to do more. They have same-sex marriage legalized in 2019. Um, their he's first a, transgender minister, uh, Audrey Tang, was elected in 2016. Wow. He's An a adoption, doctor turned politician. Uh, yes. Uh, has said that, you know, um, let's see, uh, something else. Well, of course, his standing up for gay rights, be beyond the fact that he also wants Taiwan to remain... Uh, independent. Not Well, they're not allowed <laughs> to say they're independent, but, no. they, but free of incursion from the Chinese who say they own them, mm. uh, that the pro-LGBTQ stuff is not going to endear him with uh, mm. Xi of China either. Um, it's a third term for his party. Mm -hmm. he, he succeeds President uh, Tsai Ing-wen, who was term limited, another concept foreign to uh, autocracies such as China. Totally. She was the first female president of Taiwan, something foreign to the United States. Yes, We haven't had one yet. What about France? We've got quite a bit of uh, movement there. About uh, yes, about President Macron, of course, appointing uh, Gabriel Attal um, as... As the prime minister, so while the world media has highlighted that he's the youngest prime minister and the first gay, his being gay has been omitted from many, many French news reports. And they say in France, this is part of uh, le droit uh, à la à différence, 
the right not to care. I see. Uh, that you're not supposed to talk about these mm -hmm. things. I mean, we don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gay. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, blah, blah. But um, it's 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 uh, it's the right to be essentially ignored. So. He has talked about the bullying that he experienced mm -hmm. as At a school. student, yeah. but you know he's been reluctant. He was the education minister, but he's been reluctant as education minister to pursue an investigation into a bullied gay teen who took his own life. Uh, and we reported that the the member of the European Parliament, Stéphane Séjourné, mm -hmm. was his domestic yes. partner. Emphasis should have been on the was. They're not together Apparently anymore. Apparently not. Apparently not. Um, but he is the uh, new French Foreign and European Affairs Minister. Boy, he's got his work cut out we for him. We have a picture of him there uh, with uh, Zelensky, I think. Uh, yes. That. He has pledged Zelensky and Ukraine uh, as much support as they can give, as France can give. So that's that was, That was one of his first acts. Yes. But Macron has also appointed an outspoken conservative, Rachida Dati, as culture minister, despite having little cultural experience. His party uh, is behind in the polls to the neo-fascist leader, Marine Le Pen, mm -hmm. uh, more about which when we in our culture news. Uh, you know, Macron apparently can't run again, mm -hmm. and so it's going to be his party that's going to be up against her. And then the French Union of Jewish Students has called for sanctions against people who have written anti-Semitic and homophobic comments about uh, Prime Minister Attal mm -hmm. on social network X. Mm. Atal is a baptized Christian, but his late father told him that he would feel Jewish, his father was Jewish, all his life and would always face anti-Semitism because he had a Jewish name. Yes, yes. Interesting. It is interesting. Not interesting, outrageous. Yes. All right. Over in Ireland, shall we uh, mention yeah. that the Minister of State, Jack Chambers, has come out on Instagram. Uh, he's the Irish Member of Parliament, Lower Parliament, and he said that support from fa family and friends encouraged him to share the news. He posted on Instagram, I'm starting 2024 by telling you all that I'm proud to say that I am gay. And sharing this information is becoming increasingly unremarkable, he said, noting the increasing acceptance in Ireland. 33 years old. 33 years old. A lot of, yeah. And in the United Kingdom, a Labour Party candidate in the upcoming by-election for Parliament from Hackney in London was suspended by the party uh, for transphobic remarks. Laura mm. Pascal in a tight race on January 18th, which is uh, tomorrow as we tape, for which she will still stand for election, but they're disciplining her. Yeah. Um, she posted on X that trans women are not female, uh, but Labour has an official, even though the Labour's standing up to her, Labour has an official position defending single-sex spaces for women. Mm -hmm. The Conservatives, though, are running really transphobic campaigns. Mm -hmm. And over in Greece, we've got Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis says that yeah. legislation for same-sex marriage is coming very soon. The proposed law would not extend the right to surrogacy uh, to gay parents, which is, of course, the big fear of the Greek Orthodox Church there. It's why they didn't want same-sex marriage to go through. They assumed parenting rights would be next. So he's sort of with the Roman Catholic Pope on the surrogacy issue, and, mm. I, and I don't mean this to be blasphemous at all, but I saw a, a meme this week. May I point out the most famous surrogate in history <laughs> who bore the Christ That's child right. was the Virgin Mary. <laughs> But by way of the uh, Holy Spirit. I mean, that is what Catholics believe. That, I mean, if that's not surrogacy of a sort, of you know, it is. what is? Of course it is. All right, what about uh, Russia? This tickled me, this story. Um, <laughs> Um, Make the, us laugh. Well, the Russian equivalent of MTV, I suppose. It is a, a music channel owned by the Russian energy giant uh, Gazprom. They've been fined $11,300 for airing a 1990s music video which features a nine-second lesbian kiss. There um, it is on the screen. I Shocking. Mean, <laughs> um, well, you know, look, it used to be art. Now it's propaganda. This was a video clip for a band called Tansy Minus, and the kiss was meant to symbolize the, how fabulous it was to live in a big city. Yeah, well, yeah, the channel argued that the video promotes love for Russian cities. Yeah. But love is not much of a value in totalitarian Russia these days, nor in Brazil. Well, I mean, we learned of the brutal killing of a 21-year-old lesbian. We have a picture of her, Carol Compello, back in December in the state of uh, Maranhão. Uh, Carol... Ana, Ana Caroline Sousa Campeo. Yeah, Campeo, Campeo. 
Carol has mo had moved there to be with her girlfriend. Mm. Uh, the details are so gruesome, I'm, I'm not going to recount them. It, she was tortured uh, yeah. and, and killed. Yeah, and, uh, and well, scalped and skinned is what we've heard. I just don't know what the motive is. They're calling on the on Reddit and all the chat groups, they're calling it lesbophobia, but I think more, more details certainly have to come out. Yes. Um, I know so many lesbians from Brazil. There's a vibrant lesbian community there in Rio. and. Uh, elsewhere in uh, Sao Paulo. So look, I hope they get to the bottom of that. In Africa, Catholic bishops of Africa and Madagascar issued a unified statement refusing to follow the Pope's declaration that the blessing of same-sex couples is allowed, saying such unions are contrary to the will of their God. Uh, they, say, uh, they say, and I, I don't doubt this, that the Pope's declaration has sown unrest among the Catholic mm. faithful there. Yes, well. Wow. Germany? Yes, um, Germany's federal government has a bit of good news for its people. It plans to extend parental rights to the non biological mothers in lesbian couples. Uh, German Minister of Justice Marcus uh, Bushman has stated that lesbians and gay couples will now have the same rights to happiness as straight couples. Uh, this, this was uh, brought about because in 2020, more than a dozen lesbians um, went to court. And we thank our longtime viewer, Mark, for this story. Yes. Reform the civil codes. That's All what right. they did. Let's get to the awards. Yes, the, the very gay awards. First of all, the Critics' Choice Awards. Uh, we had a few, didn't we? We had Jonathan Bailey, Get well, Best Supporting Actor. Well, we had, well, for, well, we had well, in terms of the order of our pictures, we had out oh. Mar Maria Bello. Oh, Maria. Best Supporting Actress in the TV Limited Series for Beef on Netflix. Do you watch Beef? I don't watch it. I've I, heard about it. I want to watch it now. I'm going to watch it now. I didn't know she was in it. Then Ayo Edabiri, yes. uh, Best Actress in a Comedy Series the for Bear. The Bear on FX. And then Jonathan Bailey. Yeah, for, for uh, Best Supporting Actor for Fellow Travellers, he pipped Matt Bomer at the post, but he did say to Matt, I share this with you, Matt, and gave a fabulous speech mentioning his 93-year-old grandmother. He said, I share, I share it with you. He said, <laughs> those of you who have seen Fellow Travellers know that Matt and I come together. Yeah. That was very cute. A bit racy, he, that one, I thought. He said this, well, it's, it's an innocent enough remark. Uh, he said the series is an education, <laughs> but for us it's a vital truth, a yes. reminder that LGBTQ people have always existed, mostly hidden. He thanked those who came before him and dedicated his award to all the people who lost their lives in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and to every LGBTQ person who still lives in a bigoted community, which still surround us. So it's quite moving. It's a and by speech. the way, we would love to show you these clips, but they don't belong to us. We are going to link to all these clips of these major uh, uh, acceptance speeches. In the newsletter. In, in our newsletter. If you want to sign up for our newsletter, you go to uh, gayusatv.org. There's a link there. You sign up. You get a one weekly, weekly email from us telling you what's on the show. Mm. And then let's go to the, the Emmy Emmys. Awards. Where do you want to start? And of course, Io Edabiri also Again. won for Best uh, Comedy Supporting Actress mm -hmm. for The Bear on FX. And then there's uh, Nisi, Nisi Nash Betts. Uh, she she uh, won for uh, Dharma, Best Supporting Actress in a Limited Series. Uh, that was a very moving role. It seems like a lifetime ago now, but we have to remember the Emmys uh, were postponed from September till now because of the SAG after, because of the uh, strike, the WGA strike. Um, yes. Yes. So uh, she thanked her better, this, her monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story is on Netflix. She thanked her better half for, quote, picking me up when I was gutted from this work. She accepted on behalf of every black or brown woman who has gone unheard and over-policed, like Sandra Bland and Breonna uh, Taylor. Now, of course, this was Martin Luther King Day, in mm. which this ceremony mm. was taking place. And then she went skinny dipping <laughs> at she, the hotel she... <laughs> with her wife, Jessica. Oh, you've got to see this. It's too funny. Um, you go to her Instagram account, but it's a little bit racy, too. They're in this uh, pool in the hotel with a bottle of champagne and then uh, quickly getting off uh, camera, you know. She to, knows how to, yeah, celebrate. Has to celebrate. As an artist, she said, my job is to speak truth to power, and I'm going to do it 
till the day I die. And you know who else I want to thank? I want to thank me for believing in me and doing what they said I could not do. It was yeah. quite moving. And again, we'll show you her saying it if you sign up for our email. Yeah, I love that. Um, right. Who else was a highlight of the Emmys? Uh, who else she got? Well, yes, of course. Uh, oh, the Elton John is now an EGOT. He's got his uh, Emmy, his Grammy, his Oscar and his Tony. And in this category, which was the best live variety special, he actually beat the Oscars ceremonies and the Tony ceremonies uh, to get his award for his uh, fabulous concert. Right. Um, that was great. And, and um, RuPaul's Drag Race yeah. won yet again on MTV. Uh, again, won for best competition. And RuPaul said, if a drag queen wants to read you a story at a library, listen to her, because knowledge is power. Absolutely. Uh, and the, and then, uh, then, of course, GLAAD was given an award. Yeah, the received Governor's the Governor's award. award, presented by Coleman Domingo, who's having a bit of a year this year, which is terrific. Yes. Um, but this was really, really fabulous to see. Um, and we have this video yeah, in our right. email as well. Yep. And that's Sarah Kate Ellis, at the CEO in the, in the center there. And the thing that went viral, though, was um, Jennifer Coolidge. Yes. Jennifer but Coolidge. let me finish up yeah. on GLAD because, again, I oh, want yes, to Glad. quote some of it to people, Please do. if I may. Yes. Um, you know, it was a good speech that Sarah Kate Ellis gave. She said, so many people have worked tirelessly to get LGBTQ representation here. For us, this work is personal. For me, it's about my wife and my kids, uh, our kids, she said. What the world sees on TV directly influences how we treat each other and the decisions we make in our living room, schools, at work, and at the ballot box. The world urgently needs culture-changing stories about transgender people because more Americans say they have seen a ghost than know a trans person. And when you don't know people, it's easy to demonize them. And she said visibility creates understanding and sharing stories is the antidote. Uh, so now's the time to take action. And she was getting a lot of affirmation from the audience uh, over this. Mm -hmm. And it's really, that's mm -hmm. quite bold for GLAAD, which oh, was yeah. formed like in 1985 when we were so besieged uh, by the AIDS crisis and the sensationalization in papers like the New York Post, which mm. was our first protest. They showed a clip from that. I was there. We shook dirty rags at the New York Post. Now, of course, you know, we do it at Fox News and everything else. Yes. And then there was the men kissing at the oh, Emmys. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the men from the bear, uh, there, there they are. Uh, when they got up on stage, we're, we're going at it. And in succession, Kieran Culkin, uh, now that's actually from the um, Critics Choice. Golden Globes. Oh, no, Golden Globes. I sent sorry. another picture over, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Kieran Culkin kisses Brian Cox on the lips, just as Cox kissed Culkin at the Globes. <laughs> you know, as they say in the boys in the band, once is youth, twice a phase, maybe, but three times you liked it. <laughs> All right, and All now right. we're going to talk about the play that we saw, Prayer for the French Republic, by gay playwright Joshua Harmon. Uh, this is not a gay-themed show. There was one mention of lesbians for two seconds, um, and directed by the out director, David Cromer. It's about a Jewish family in Paris in 2016 grappling with the question of staying or fleeing, mm. which is, I mean, certainly a big question for Jews, uh, in terms of there was a right there's rising it there was rising anti-semitism then there's rising anti-semitism now eight they say eight thousand this play gives you a lot of information eight thousand Jews at that time from Paris or from France left for Israel uh, to get out of uh, France I mean of course if you talk about going to Israel now of course you're going into a hot spot yeah. but um, anyway um, but it also has flashback had flashbacks in this, you're in the same apartment for the entire time to uh, the grandparents of one of the main characters lived there, somehow survived as Jews in their apartment yes. uh, in World War II yes, yes. when the Nazis were there uh, taking over. And it also asked the question, why do they hate us? I mean, they actually address this. I mean, this is a Jewish family grappling with this. Uh, what, the son in the family is about 25 or something like that. He he got a little religious, so he he wears a yarmulke, mm. and he got he, he in one of the early scenes. I'm not giving too much away. He gets beat up on the street for it, and his mother wants him to wear a baseball cap, cover it up, mm. and that becomes a big issue. And he says, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to live that way. Mm. 
You know, it's like it's like us. To, I mean, gay people deciding: Do I hold hands or not where I am, mm. and in, and invite, or do I wear it? You know. What I liked about this play, it was three hours long with two intermissions, so it's pretty much an epic investment of your time. But what I liked about it was it did something that theatre does that other things cannot do, which is dr draw you into somebody else's life, somebody else's experience. It's not like scrolling on your phone and seeing more terrible news from CNN about the Gaza Strip. It's like the nuance and the texture of this play, the intergenerational scenes, um, you know, the monologues, uh, the diet, some of the very heated dialogue, it really is the closest we can come in a, in a sort of Aristotelian way to empathy, to understanding somebody else's position. And I did need this play because I'd, I'd very much gotten in, embedded in the Gaza and the atrocities and the 24,000 deaths and, you know, you feel yourself tipping into that way and then it's like, yes, but what about the thousands of years of persecution of Jewish people which right. this play teases out and it reminds you of their, their psychosis and their they're uh, always being uh, uh, under attack. So, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting play. Well, uh, it's set in 2016, and so there's references to the election of Trump, which comes as a shock, <laughs> and the rise of Marine Le Pen in, in France. Now, of course, in the play, you know, there's one character who keeps saying, oh, stop worrying, she's never going to be the president of France. Well, she may the next time. I almost wish that Joshua, since he was revising the play somewhat for the Broadway production, this was a big hit off Broadway mm. uh, two years ago that he might have addressed some of that and mm. of course and also addressed the whole situation we're in right now the really complex situation uh, with the war in the Middle East that's happening right now but it is what it is uh, uh, you know I didn't mind so much that it was it was stationary in 2016 because I'm not sure we've even gotten over the events of 2016 yet I don't feel we've really digested them and processed get over them. them they're accelerating it's almost like it's happening again frankly so you know but you know as I pointed out uh, before, yes, there are governments around the world have, that have gone to the right, mm. but in some places where they had right wing governments, they've gone to the left because mm. basically, when people are unhappy, they just vote for change. So that's we don't right. quite know what's going to happen this year, and that's why that's we're right. all on edge. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I know what's going to happen, but I'm not going to say it. <laughs> what will happen is we will prevail if we all band together and unite and, and work together. That's what will happen. Yes. That's how we that's how we prevail. And you know what? I mean, <laughs> if we lose an election or something and look, we lost the house this year, right? Um, you know, you you we become countercultural as much as we can. Now I realize things can get really oppressive in really totalitarian states and then you, you know, then you have to go into hiding. Uh, I hope we don't have to do that. And, I certainly don't intend to. Well, my very optimistic... Not at my advanced age. Not at your advanced age. But I did I did want to call out again Jennifer Coolidge for having the viral, oh. the most viral moment, and probably this is the coder I want to end the show on, is I didn't think I'd ever see the day that a straight actress could develop a cult following and allude to it in a way that everyone understands when she's at the podium and says, I just want to thank all the evil gays. <laughs> and that we don't actually... A line from the show. A line from the show, but we don't have to go out there now picketing that some actress called us evil. You know, it, it, there is a trajectory that we well, actually... That you, that you can understand the difference between that's a character. That's right, exactly. The irony and that it's celebrated and, and in fact made a, a fabulous career for her. So that was amusing and well, of course it went viral. Some people who play evil characters get spit on on the street, you know. <laughs> it's true. People take these things very seriously. Uh, we're almost out of time. It's yes. been great to be with you. As yes. I said, and we'll be back next week. Uh, uh, tanned and ready. Tanned? Where is she gone? Oh, am I allowed to say? I don't know. Uh, well, we'll I'll let, <laughs> I'll let Anne tell you next week. Uh, but thanks for being with us, and we appreciate your watching.